Good morning. Good morning. We'll do that again. You mentioned Methodist. We'll do it again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, this is Mr. Tom Walters. He is a network engineer, infrastructure architect, and technical trainer for Quick Solutions Incorporated. He has designed, specified, configured, and implemented network solutions that span 25 years of IT industry growth from DOS 3.0, VMS, Windows 2.11, Netware 2.0A, to Windows 8, Linux, Windows Server 2012 R2. <coughs> Tom has been asked to present at Netware Users International, Brainshare, Developer Days, and Dog Food. Tom's classroom experience and membership on review committees for authorized courseware ensure a thorough understanding of how vendors intend their products to be used. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You weren't really supposed to mention the Linux thing while Keith is in the room. <laughs> Linux. Uh, well, there's a list. I can't say right now. <laughs> Come on in. We're just getting started. Okay, so a little bit about me. Uh, he just went through all this stuff. The, the important thing is what the last line. I work hard every day to not become what I despised. Because as you get older, it gets harder and harder to be, not become what you despised. So, what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about free tools. Now, when, when I talk about these things, you know, I always want people to have a big wow factor, but you know, there, there might be some things that you know in here already. But if you can walk away with two or three things that uh, you didn't know before you walked in here, that'd be great. You're, you're going to get a lot out of this session. Come on in. There's a chair there, chair there, chair there. I'll, here, somebody can have this chair. <laughs> so um, we're going to go over uh, tools to assess your environment, deploy and migrate systems, virtualize systems, monitor critical systems. We're going to go over some troubleshooting tools, and we're even going to talk about how you can make your own free tools. Okay, so free being in the sense that they are no additional cost. Okay, let me put. Put up that, uh, that disclaimer now. No additional cost. So our first tool up has to do with assessment. How many of you work in an environment where, gee, you know, I really wish I knew what I had out there. Because to be honest with you, I don't know what I have out there. Any of you like that? Come on, we're all friends here. We can be honest <laughs> with each other. OK? Yeah. I'm, so many people, they say, well, you know what? I can't afford mom. I can't afford, or SCOM. No, I can't afford some of these other tools that will go out and tell me what's out there. Um, but boy, it sure would be nice to know what I have. So there is a tool that Microsoft created called the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit, or MAP for short. How many of you have heard of the MAP Toolkit? Well, either we have some very shy people or you folks are going to get a lot out of this. Okay, so um, what it does, it does agentless inventory assessment and reporting. And the reports are pretty good. Uh, now, the idea behind this tool is it was for partners like QSI. Uh, we're supposed to take this into an organization, run this tool, and very quickly we can come up and tell people, you know, you've got this many of this kind of thing, you've got this many of this kind of thing, and if you want to roll out this operating system, these, well, you can come on in and join us. You're welcome. Here, here's, here, you can have my chair. So ladies, ladies, get to sit. Oh, there's one here. Okay. I'll, I'll give up my chair. Anybody here? Let's, let's, let's just pass this on back. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to give it to any one person. And so, th this tool allows us to go in and help people 
determine, well, you've got this many systems that won't run Windows 7, or won't run Windows 2012, or run Windows 8. And here are the problems with them. They need their processors upgrade. They need their BIOS upgrade. They need, there are all kinds of things I can find out about it. But the cool thing is, this is a free tool that anyone can download. It'll take you maybe a day, maybe a day to figure it out and install it. You can run it on um, SQL Express or whatever they call it, the embedded database or whatever they call it these days, the free database version. And it creates some really cool reports. So you can come in and you want to know what you have. I get something that looks like this. Now it's kind of hard to see on this kind of rather small screen and, and I really haven't had vision like that since 1971. Uh, yeah, 2001 A Space Odyssey was far out, man, far out. But uh, look at all the information that you can get off of this. Um, you know, I can get my WMI status, I can get my service pack level, the current operating system, active network adapters, the IP addresses, the MAC addresses, the DNS server it's looking at, subnet mask, yada, yada, yada. Look at all that stuff. Number of processors, number of cores, logical processor count, CPUs, video card, video, the disk drives that are on it, the disk drive size, any optical drives, the BIOS version, BIOS release date and the physical machine, or the phys bleh, the machine type, whether it's physical or virtual. So as I scroll through this, I can get all kinds of information out of this. I mean, just, I run this for maybe an afternoon and uh, I can collect information on hundreds and hundreds of workstations out there. How many of you think a report like that might be useful in your job? How many of you, you know, it would be kind of nice to know what you have, right? And it's free. All you have to do is go out to this link and download it. And I know it's hard to read, so you email me a request and I'll shoot you this presentation, okay? Then all you have to do is click on the link. You don't even type it in. So, any questions about the Microsoft? Yes? Don't you have to go to all those machines and open ports before you can get all that information? Um, yes, you will have to open ports, but if you have group policy, you can open those ports via group policy. And if you don't know how to do that, I believe Daniel Benway is going to have a really good presentation on group policy later today. Yeah. I mean, there, there are things that, that can prevent it, but in general, it's a great tool. So come on, come on in. Uh, yeah, come on. Uh. So, and where have you been? I mean, it's like 841. We're not on central time here, folks. Okay. Any other questions about the assessment planning toolkit? It is agentless, so he brings up a good point. You have to have ports open. In general, it's best that you have uh, your domain, you just disable the firewall on your domain for the afternoon that you want to run it. Uh, there are other types of reports like the utilization report. I can run this against SQL Server. I might, I've run SQL Server uh, things for like a month where it goes out every 15 seconds and checks all the performance counters on my SQL servers. And it'll come back and it'll create a report for me on how they're utilized and how I could consolidate databases by uh, getting a, a perhaps an enterprise version of SQL Server and moving it on to you know one piece of hardware with multiple instances. So it's a great tool, but it is a caveat. You have to have the ports open. It's agentless, so WMI has to be working. But most of those things can usually be controlled through group policy. Okay, so once I get an idea of what I have out there, I might want to deploy some stuff, but, you know, I put configuration manager in the budget last year, but then I was laughed out of the meeting. Uh, that, that ever happened to anybody? You want that tool, but you can't get it, right? So how many of you have heard of the deployment toolkit? Just a few of you? The deployment toolkit is really cool because 
it's kind of configuration manager light. Okay, so it's a free download. It is a free download. It is the operating system deployment portion of configuration manager. In fact, config current versions of configuration manager require that you install this first because it actually provides the WinPE bits that are required to boot machines into um, a mode in which they can receive a WIM file. Come on in. You're welcome to join us. All are welcome here. Um, I can build, I can capture, and I can deploy operating systems with this tool. Of course, if I want to deploy operating systems using Pixie or something like that, I need uh, Windows deployment services somewhere on my network. Uh, so we need a little help there. But it, it's pretty cool. I mean, I can deploy applications through here. I can uh, build a gold image with this. I can capture Windows images. Sometimes I just want to capture images of workstations for backup purposes. You know, some of those needy, uh, high profile users that we have to deal with sometimes. <laughs> Gee, I'd like to get an image of that machine before I you know, really mess with it. Uh, job safety there. Um, this is a great tool. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk about how you use these tools. Some of you might be saying, well, yeah, Tom, but you're going through this stuff so fast. How am I ever going to learn to use it? I'm going to give you the tools to learn how to use these tools, because there are some great uh, things out there in the community. Now, the current version, which is 2013, works with Server 2012, 2008, and Windows 7, and Windows 8. Uh, you can get older versions of the MDT. If you're, anybody still running? XP here? Well, we have three people that admit that they're still running <laughs> XP here. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Um, now, this tool is not going to give you the zero-touch deployment that Configuration Manager does. That's, that's sweet. Zero-touch deployment is what we all strive for. But it will give you a light-touch deployment. So essentially what happens is you boot to Pixie, you got, you'll have a menu there that you can choose from. You might have multiple images that you want to deploy. All the drivers are built in. Sometimes your applications are layered on there, especially Office, because I like to throw Office in the main image because most people get Office anyways. Do my light touch deployment, I just go down, press enter on the correct image, and it takes care of it from there. Really, that's something that you can offload to somebody else, right? You don't have to spend your time doing that. You can get an intern or somebody to come in and you know go down the menu and press enter. That's pretty easy to do. You download it from here, free tool from Microsoft. It is a great tool. Now, how many of you have a, your, your own test lab at work? You test things before you roll them out, don't you? Well, I got three servers in my basement, Tom. Well, you're going to find out later. I got servers in my basement, too. We're actually going to be looking at them later. Um, but uh, yeah, we'd, we'd all like to have test labs, wouldn't we? We'd like to have that. Well, here's something that can help you get there. Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. How many of you have heard of Hyper-V Server 2012? I'm not talking about the one that comes with Windows. I'm talking about a standalone product, Hyper-V Server 2012, that is free. I mean free like air. It's free. You just go out and download it. Right? It is not an eval. It is not a limited time license. It is not a reduced feature product. You get the whole nine yards with it. You, you want to have uh, volumes that are 64 terabytes in size. This is your virtualization platform. Here, come on in. <laughs> now, some of these people are wondering, why aren't you being mean to him like you were mean to me when I came in? Because <laughs> I have, we're, I'm being taped and there's only so much meanness I can have for them. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is, this is what differentiates this platform from some other virtualization platforms, is that with the free product, you get the whole nine yards. Technically, you can do live migrations with this. You can do uh, 
failover clustering with it. You can do anything you want to. Huge uh, disk sizes, lots of CPUs, no extra cost. Now, there, there are a couple of caveats. You will need a Windows machine somewhere to run the admin tool for it, because when it comes up, it, it has just a, a command shell there that, it, that lets you run very simple things. But theoretically, you could run the whole thing from PowerShell, theoretically, for, for those of you who are PowerShell fanatics. Um, it does not require SCVMM, Virtual Machine Manager. It's not like that other platform where you have to have vCenter to do a whole lot of the things that you want to do, especially when it comes to high availability. It's free. It's fully functional. It just works. Right? Now remember, you will have to pay for your operating system environments that run on it. Right? It's not that those aren't free, but this is. You can download it from here. Now, you may be in the situation where, gee, I got a whole lot of these VMDK files for all these machines that I had built on that other platform, and now I want to take advantage of this free thing that Tom told me about. And it looks really great, and I can do, you know, like, migration, uh, I have nothing migration in my basement. That would be cool. Do you all think that would be cool, don't you? Because I, I tell my wife that, and... You know, she kind of shakes her head and said, I should have married Scott, whoever that is. <laughs> but it really is cool. It's, it's really cool stuff. So um, you want to, you can't run those other kind of virtual machine, virtual disks on your machine. So there is a free virtual machine converter out there that will take your VMware virtual machines and turn them into Hyper-V based virtual machines. This is a supported tool. And it's important that you understand that this is a fully supported tool because in a minute we're going to talk about a tool that is not fully supported. Okay. This tool is fully supported. It will automatically replace the VMware tools with Hyper-V integration components and drivers for those operating system environments that require them. because. A lot of operating systems that are out there now already have the Hyper-V bits in them. It's a, there's a wizard-driven GUI interface. It's really easy to learn. And there's a command line interface that you can script. So you get the best of both worlds, and it is free, and you can download it from here. And I wish I had a demo of this, but I don't today. So the Virtual Machine Converter. Good stuff. Now, I just talked about how you convert a virtual machine to a virtual machine. How would I convert my physical machines to virtual machines? Well, there's a product from SysInternals. How many of you have heard of SysInternals? How many of you have heard of Mark Rasinovich? I'm kind of surprised because he's like the rock star of Microsoft. Everybody's heard of him. I hate people like that. He's smart, he's tall, he's good looking, he's a lot younger than I am. He has a PhD. Yeah, I hate people like that. Uh, but he really is a pretty smart guy, and he and a, and a uh, guy named Bryce Coxwell developed this set of tools called SysInternals, actually as part of their uh, PhD work when they were at Carnegie Mellon. And uh, it, w what started out as kind of a graduate school project has become this uh, it's taken on a life of its own. So there are lots more people working on the SysInternals team now, but SysInternals is a free download, and it has a number of tools, and I'm going to talk about three or four here. And the first is disk to vhd So disk to vhd does pretty much what it says it does. It takes a physical disk and converts it into a VHD or VHDX file. All of you familiar with the differences between VHD and VHDX files? Oh, dang, and you're missing Jerry Regan's presentation on new features in, in Hyper-V3. Oh, rats. The, the, the choices we have to make, right? Well, too bad you came in here. 
I guess I'm just a bigger draw. <laughs> At least that's what I like to think. Um, the second thing up here is Process Explorer. Now, what anybody can anybody tell me what you can do with Process Explorer that's really cool? You can make it your task manager. Has anybody in here ever done that? Made Process Explorer your task manager. So how many times have you gone into Task Manager and you see service host, service host, service host, service host, service host, service host, Man, I got like 30 iterations of service host and they're all using up a lot of CPU and I have no idea what they're, have any of you ever been in that situation where you just, what the heck is going on? Well, Process Explorer is a great tool for you. You come out here and you run your task manager. If when you the first time you run Process Explorer, it will ask you, do you do you want well no, it's I think it's actually an option over here, isn't it? I think it's an option over here where you can tell it, I want this to be my task manager. Yeah, replace task manager. So you just go to options replace task manager. You have to be a, an administrator on the local machine. And when you pull up task manager from that point forward, now I have real information to work with. So as I come down here and I see these little service host things, I can open them up and I can see what's exactly is running in that service host. There's lots of cool stuff here, the much more detailed information. And some people say, Tom, why don't they just make that the, the task manager? Now, really, think about it. If, if you're like me, you're the PC support person for your family. Can, can you imagine your brother-in-law, Bubba? Okay, Bubba, go down, right-click that bar, and tell it you want to open the task manager. When that opens, Bubba's head is going to explode, right? <laughs> So, you know, they don't do this because a lot of people, this would just, it would be information overload for a lot of people. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of information in this little thing. So, Sys Internals is, is good download if for no other reason than you just want to put this product on your server so you can tell where all that CPU time is going. It's a great tool and it's free. Now, some of the other things we have here. Um, these two tools, Process Monitor and Auto Exec, uh, Auto Runs, are good tools for going in. Process Monitor used to be called FileMon and RegMon. Proce process Monitor goes out and while you're running it, it figures out all of the files that you're touching while you do this. So I'm, I install this application and all of a sudden the screen turns purple and it starts making funny noises. What is going on? And then I can't fix it. So what, what, what did it do? What did it change? Well, Process Monitor will go out and look at all the, they'll tell you all the files that it touched, it'll tell you all the registry entries that it touched. Auto Runs is a tool that goes out and figures everything that has told Windows that it's supposed to run at startup. It's great for finding malware. Little insidious executables that are sitting out there that have decided to make themselves run. And anytime you delete them, there's another piece that tells them, go ahead and copy this file back over here and tell it to auto run. So great tools. The last one I want to talk about here is PS Exec. How many of you have used PS Exec? <clears throat> okay, PS Exec is a tool that allows you to run code in the context of the system. Does that sound like it could be something useful? Well, useful for good people like us, right? I can not only run it on my local machine in the context of the system, I can tell it to go run over on some other machine in the context of the system. It's a very, very powerful tool. And, and you know how system administrators will go in and set up that thing like, go ahead and set up user profiles and just have it create it for exclusive use when the user first logs on, and then you gotta go in and fish something out of that folder structure. Have you ever had to do that? Because it's really exclusive. I mean, even administrators can't get in and get it. So PS Exec comes in really handy in those cases to save you from yourself 
So you can go in and run iCackles and go back and grab ownership of things that Windows is blocking you on. It's a great, uh, great tool. While I'm thinking about it, everybody must take one on their way out. Because I'm not taking these back to Columbus. Okay? We had to drag them over here. So everybody gets one. This is introducing Windows Azure for IT professionals. Lots of good stuff in here. Keith Mayer, back there in the corner. He'll be talking about Azure and using Azure to build a lab and lots of cool stuff like that. This is the <coughs> Azure man back here. Good, good stuff in there. Um, PS exec, all right, sysinternals. There's lots more sysinternals. You could probably spend two days just talking about sysinternals, uh, and I don't have two days. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. But uh, it's a free download, something you want to, to get. Now, here's how about CM Trace? How many of you have ever run into CM Trace and used it? Just, just, just Keith. You know, my nickname for Keith is the TARDIS. Does anybody get that reference? Any Whovians in here? Yes, it's because apparently there's more room in his brain than you can see from the outside. So you don't want to miss his sessions uh, later on this morning. You know, he's pretty good. Uh, well, CM Trace. CM Trace is the Configuration Manager Trace Utility. And if any of you have ever worked in that Nix world, there's a, there's a really cool utility in the Nix world called Tail. Now, what's great about Tail? It allows me to open a log file and tail it in real time. So I see it display. And people say, why, don't they, why didn't they ever come up with this in Windows? This is a really useful tool. I don't want to have to constantly reopen in Notepad every time I think there's been a change. This is the tool you want, cmtrace.exe. It's part of the Configuration Manager Toolkit. Right? Now, they made it for Configuration Manager people only, right? Well, don't tell Keith this, but anybody can download the toolkit for free and extract cmtrace, and believe me, you won't be sorry you took the time to do it. So what does it look like? By default, I think I've got one right out here. <laughs> okay, so I've got this huge log file, and one of the thing about one of the things about log files is they have lots of metadata in them. So there's like timestamps and and sources and things like that that kind of you don't really notice the real message that's in there. And gee, it would be nice if I could go to the message that really makes a difference to me. So by default, the trace log does squeeze everything down to what's really apparently important in the message. And then we'll give you the metadata down at the bottom as, you know, like the time it happened, what generated it, and all that stuff. But the other nice feature about it is if I'm looking through this log file and I'm looking for an error, and it, it's a big log file, but I can scan through it fairly quickly. Oh, there it was. It's easy because errors come up in red. Oh, failed to load logging configuration for CCM exec, 87D00275. Oh, the old 87D005 <laughs> ploy, yes. Now I know what's going on, all right? Now this is a great tool, as I said, because it will monitor in real time. As you're watching the log file, it'll scroll up through it, runs down to the bottom, and it just keeps feeding you information. Great tool, and it's free. All you have to do is download it, extract it, put it in your Windows folder, so it's on the path. And the first time you start it up, it'll ask you, do you want to make CM Trace the default viewer for log files? I recommend you say yes. Great tool. SyncToy. How many of you have heard of SyncToy? Keith, you don't count anymore. You're <laughs> sorry. Somehow I get the, the idea that Keith was always the kid that was raising his hands. When do how many of you know this? <laughs> Keith, Keith, Keith. All right. Uh, Sync toy. It's a free download. 
Here's what it does, it's really simple. It uses the Microsoft synchronization framework to synchronize two folders. Gee, have you ever thought, boy, it would be nice if I could just, whatever I copied in this folder on this machine, it would show up in that machine and that folder over there, right? That's all I want it to do. So I'll write a robocopy batch file that's like got a command like, you know, this long. Now, how, many, how many robocopy switches are there? I believe there are 73 switches. I believe, but it changes on a constant basis. All this does is it synchronizes files and folders between two locations. It comes in 32-bit and 64-bit versions. A lot of people use this as a quick and dirty DR plan. I just want this to copy to our other facility down on Elm Street. I tell it, you copy this folder structure to this folder structure, and then I can put it in the task scheduler and tell it to run once an hour, once every four hours, once a day once a week. Now it'll run in one of three different modes. Does it maintain file permissions? Man, that's a good question. I don't, I don't think I've ever looked. Keith, you know that? It, um, it does. Let's just pop out here. Okay, so here's Sync Toy. This is on my one of my machines in the basement. It's purring away there till I come home. That scary part of the basement that my wife will never go into again. So it's my responsibility to clean. Good luck there. Um, so I have one on my machine in the basement and it's syncing to my machine in my office. And when I set it up, I have the option to synchronize, that is, whatever's added, deleted, or modified in this folder is added, deleted, or modified in the, in the other folder, and it works in both directions. Or I have the option to echo. The folder on the left, additions and deletions, modifications are echoed to the folder on the right. It goes in one direction only. And then the third way to do it, is contribute. Anything that's added or modified on the left gets added or deleted, I mean added or modified on the right. Deletions aren't deleted. I have a lot of people that actually use that feature because they the, the local copy is kind of dynamic but they want it, the, the, the remote copy is kind of an archive. So whatever they copy in there it, it uh, is moved over to the other one for safe keeping. Could any of you uh, find a useful purpose for this? I mean, if you go to the website, it says, well, if you, you just want to share pictures and stuff like that. No, I don't want to share pictures. I want to share, you know, WIM files and ISOs and things like things I really need. I want to make sure there are other locations. So I can do that with this tool, I move it into here, I'm sure that it's going to get out to those other locations. And I do have some clients that are actually using this as part of their DR plan. Because they just don't have the money for anything else, so something's better than nothing. Any? Yes, I can use the Windows Task Scheduler to schedule it. So you'll notice down here it has a button that just says run. And if you want to know how to do that, you go up to help. There's actually a, a separate help topic in the sync toy help on scheduling sync toy. And it goes over the command line that you have to issue to schedule it to run. So anything I can schedule in the scheduler, I can schedule for the sync toy. The only thing I would caution you about is don't schedule it so close together. The, the interval is so short that you can't possibly copy the stuff over. Because SyncToy, just like me, can become confused. Any questions on SyncToy? Can I use that to say copy from multiple backup sets into one space? Sure. Like, uh, just would it rename the pair and 
very well. So you want to copy place. your backup somewhere? So you're picking it up for a tape archive, or is just that's just your location that you're going to store everything? It's going away. Yeah. Some people use it to to push it out to a USB drive that they take off site once a week. So they have two or three USB drives. They use SyncToy to copy it over. The 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 target directory is named the same on all the USB drives, so it doesn't matter which USB drive is is plugged in. They come in on you know Monday, unplug one, move the other one, uh, you know the first one off site, and they plug in another one. SyncToy still goes on like it always has. Does that that work? Works for them. Free free download. All right, now this is kind of a new one because uh, you actually used to, uh, this used to be like a subscription service a while ago. Now it's free. It's called the System Center Advisor. And it provides online monitoring. So here, here's the deal. You know, if I'd only had time to run the best practices analyzer on my, you know, 123 servers, I'd have known about that problem. But I didn't have time to go out and run the best practices analyzer on my 123 systems. Ever, anybody ever? I mean, how, how many of you think your systems are <coughs> configured as good as they can be? Yeah. Well, again, thank you for your honesty. We'd all like our systems to be in better shape, wouldn't we? Well, this is a tool that can help you. So, it. it uh, it essentially goes out and looks for a best practice configuration. The rules are kept up to date. It looks for critical updates on specific types of systems. I'll show you the rules here in a minute. And it can integrate with on-premises SCOM. So is this a replacement for operations manager? No, it is not. It's not going to tell me you have this percentage of free disk space left on drive G on you know, server Frodo. It's going to be uh, more like, hey, this machine is an exchange server and it doesn't have this roll-up update, which is really important. Though that type of information. Now, I was, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be really cool and show you a before and after of what this can do for you. So last Saturday, I spun up some machines in my basement and said, well, gee, I'll put Exchange 2010 and Windows Server 2008 RTM versions out there and take a picture because they'll be way out of date, and then I'll, I'll update them, and then I'll show them what it looks like when it's all updated. Well, they're still updating. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> so I, I thought it was going to be cool. Thought it was going to be cool. Uh, but show you what this looks like. Let's go down here. Here I am, I'm logged in to, to uh, System Center Advisor here. So it's just www.systemcenteradvisor.com. And when you first go there, it, it, it has a setup and it tells you what to download. You need to download an executable and a certificate. Well, Tom, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm running stuff out here and I don't have any DNS records for what I'm running. I mean, it's just kind of a test lab and yeah, like what I'm running in my basement, right? So what it does is it downloads the certificate so it can communicate with you securely. And it's really kind of initiated from the agent that's running on what's called the gateway computer. So I have a, a gateway agent that's running and then I have an advisor agent that goes around and collect information. So I have usually one gateway and I have all advisor agents running on my other machines. The advisor agents pick up the information, throw it back to the gateway machine, pumps it up. Um, I don't have to have public DNS records. I don't have to have any of that stuff for System uh, Center Advisor to work. So this is the uh, shape. Uh, boy, it looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? If I look at the changes that have occurred, well, I, I've had a ton of changes. I've, I've deployed a lot of stuff this week. Lots and lots of stuff. It just wasn't enough to get it up to the green zone yet, apparently. I can come in here and look at the current snapshot. I can look at my different machines and configuration information about them, things like that. A lot of good information here about, you know, what do I need to make things right? This lists all these things. I'm missing operating system update, all this over here. So there's a lot of good information here to help keep your systems healthy 
It doesn't cost you anything but the time to go out and download it and load it on your machines. It's all secure going up to System Center Advisor. You have to have the password and the account name to get in. So you can do it through your Windows Live account, or you could do it through a Microsoft corporate account. Windows, how many of you have Windows Live accounts? Because yeah, they're you know, really easy to get. All I have to do is go out and sign up for them. I think I've got like 18, 19 of them. Most of them I forgot the passwords for. That's the problem when it's free. You don't really pay that close attention to things. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about, well, the next to the last thing, BYOT. Build your own tools. This is an inventory tool that uses WMI that's written in PowerShell. This is the real thing. I mean, this really works. I'm going to show you how this works. I'm crediting uh, Don Jones. He's a PowerShell MVP. And there, this is actually uh, on TechNet. There's an article that tells you how to build this uh, tool. But, but that's really all there is to it. And it's a pretty cool tool. So if I open it up, And I go out to my PowerShell. One thing I want to warn you is that when you run this tool, you do need to run it in the context of the administrator. So you have to open up an administrative PowerShell window. Here is the, here's the script I'm running. So it, the, the script actually loads a function into PowerShell. So you dot source that by going dot space dot backslash in the name of the of the script that it's in. In this case, I called this, what did I call it? WMI inventory.ps1. So that looked like dot, space, dot, backslash, and then the name of my script. I've already loaded it. So it's now a function that's resident in PowerShell. So all I have to do now is type in localhost and then pipe that to my function, which is get WMI inventory. Press enter, and there's some inventory information. Now, the way the script is written is the default bot value for the class that I'm querying is the Win32 operating system. So this is the information for the Win32 operating system. It's written to take an input, uh, a pipe of a computer name. So I could put computer names, you know, 100 of them in a file, one per line do an import CSV, read that in one line at a time and pipe it this to com command, and then I can have this write out to a file. I could just simply do a greater than sign and output it to a text file and let it run. I can run lots of different classes. So I might want to run something like, uh, I was playing around with this this morning, like I want to know what the, what the motherboard is in my uh, computer. Or I want to know, um, well I do, are you going to come back here and tell me? Oh, that's not going to work. I'm not at that IP address anymore. So I could, I, could I could input an IP address. I could input a computer name. If I'm on my local machine, I can put in, input localhost. Whatever name, it can recognize. So it's going to take it a, a bit to time out. Let me skip that. That should read something like, uh, like that. So I can get information about my baseboard or see what else have I got um, what else have I got in here well let's just type something um, how about video controller that's pretty good deal I mean I could write this so it would go out to my network and start pulling in all this information. Of course, I probably could have loaded the map tool and gotten the same information, a lot less work. But PowerShell's a good, you know, it's a good exercise to go through, good uh, exercise. So uh, you're, build your own tools with PowerShell. This uh, is out on TechNet. I'm going to give you the link for that here. So how do you learn about these things? Because the tools aren't any good if you don't know what you're doing with them. So first place to go, Microsoft Virtual Academy. Links up there for running the assessment planning toolkit, the deployment toolkit, Hyper-V Server 2012, System Center Advisor, SysInternals, and PowerShell. 
right? Microsoft Virtual Academy. TechNet Virtual Labs. How many of you have been to my, well, first of all, how many of you knew about Microsoft Virtual Academy? How many of you have been out there? And it's, it's free stuff and it's really good, all right? It's really good. It's like, for the, how many of you are going to TechEd here in a couple of weeks? Yeah. How many of you wanted to go to TechEd in a couple of weeks? Yeah, so Microsoft Virtual Academy is like, you know, kind of recycled tech ed. So it, it's not the tech ed that you'll see in two weeks, but it's tech ed from a while back. It's pretty good stuff. Um, so the next thing is TechNet Virtual Labs. How many of you have been out to TechNet Virtual Labs? What? It's free. It's free. You know, there's nothing like, you know, it's Friday evening. Kids have settled down. There's a fire in the fireplace. I get my notebook, a 22 ounce beverage, and I sit down for some quality time with TechNet Virtual Labs. Now, that's a good evening, all right? Here are the links to the TechNet Virtual Labs for Hyper-V, for Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, and for PowerShell. Hands-on labs, free, you just have to connect, Log in and run. And then blogs, hey, Keith, uh, there's our rock star back there, Keith Mayer blog. Keith has just gazillions of things. If you're interested in getting your certifications or anything, that's, that's the place you wanna go. He has all kinds of fast tracks to get you certified. Um, he also has things to ramp up on different technologies very quickly. Uh, he and his buddy from North Carolina, they have some interesting conversations on some of their webcasts. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to watch. And uh, he's always, uh, you know, got good stuff for you. Uh, the Sys Internals team blog, uh, if you want to learn about Sys Internals. The MDT team blog uh, for the uh, Deployment Toolkit, Hyper-V and PowerShell team blogs. And if you'd like a copy of the presentation, you can email me or you can email jtokash at quicksolutions.com. I ran out of time five minutes ago, so I thank you for sitting and not walking out right when the time was up. Thank you very much. Have a great day here at the conference.